Welcome to episode 1 of my PIX campaign. If you've watched the introduction you know this is a very much a campaign that I want to play and I hope you're going to enjoy watching me play it. The objective is survive, the first objective is to survive to spring 425 which is almost standard for all Attila campaigns. The idea is to basically to try and fulfill all these requirements so the initial ones for a minor victory are very straightforward Caledonia et Hibernia, Britannia Inferior which is just these two provinces I mean it shouldn't be a difficult campaign overall and then it expands out a bit more here to Scadanza which is over here Ligeria which is basically Italy. The cultural victory is even simpler. And then for Divine Triumph, a few more. You've got Transcontinent here, which is down in Spain, and Germania there. So to get the required provinces shouldn't be that difficult a requirement. Obviously, I would be wanting to go much. I certainly would want to push down, but get the Western Roman, Eastern Roman Empire, and even go head to head with the Sassanids if possible. So, this is very much a campaign that I'm looking to enjoy. Now, now down to the nitty gritty. Whenever I start a campaign, the first thing I like to do, as I explained in my introduction, I I like to play all the elements of the game. So, one thing I like to do is look at my family tree. Many players don't regard the family tree as particularly important and just ignore it. But a, a good developing good attributes amongst your family tree, developing a strong family tree, can really add value to the game. And also, conversely, bad attributes can have a, a negative impact on the game. This is the faction leaders. Adobicom Bigaius, whoever he is. I'll just call him the faction leader. Uh, he's clocking on a bit. He's 57, so need to think about and what the, developing the air. He's got some pretty good traits, personal influence. Certainly got some good personal influence there. He's got a wife, adding to personal influence, adding public order to the husband. So that's certainly a good one there. Got three fa adult family members, although I'm not sure what the yellow line stands for. Oh, so th this brother's adopted. So this is the heir. Again, not particularly great there, but he's only 30, so he's quite young. His sister, personal influence too, green, cunning. Now she's got good attributes. When Whenever I have a family member, the female member of the family comes of age, has got good attributes, then I always v never, unless by accident, use her to form an alliance. I always use her to bring somebody from the other nobles into the family, often someone else with good, uh, noble with good attributes. If, if for some reason she's got very bad negative attributes then I use that use them for alliances and the other faction because when when a, f uh, a princess marries into another faction she leaves the family tree and doesn't contribute anything else so they can deal with her negative attributes second son very much the same as the first so basically a quick review I've got an aging faction leader but in royal parlance I've got an heir and a spare and a backup with the name of the princess so that's a good start now the, ne the next thing I always like to do is look at diplomacy now actually I won't look at diplomacy now I'll just talk about my strategy first now the picks start with the region capital the Caledonians start with a minor settlement down here and of course the Abdalians down here so on first view it looks like the Picts have got the best of the draw they've got the regional capital with three slots which means they can develop 
The downside is they have no ports. The nearest ports are down here or Eblanum. So it's got the only basically the only faction they can trade with is the Caledonians. So trade developing trade or even expanding is going to be a problem because to expand the the picks have got two basic choices or three basic choices the third one I will is the one I'm going to go for but just thing first one is they use the water they've got no navy so they're gonna to have to chance their one army to go out here find somewhere to conquer which isn't going to be easy unless they sail off down to Spain here or somewhere like that which I've got no intention of doing just at this point because there's a chance you could lose the whole army the second option is to come down and try and contact, um, conquer the Romans but that means they're going to have to cross Caledonian territory sorry mouth's a bit dry um, Caledonian territory which means they've either got to get uh, military access which is going to be quite difficult to do because I'm pretty sure the Caledonians don't particularly like us but it's improving so and the other one is just to trespass and probably end up fighting them anyway which brings me to the third option the third option is to take them out and push them away fight for away take over there get two regions in the province and all that now the first thing I'm going to try and do is have a look at let's have a look at see what they got because at the moment the Romans hate us the Franks I don't think range marriage no I don't particularly they want my daughter not so I'm certainly not marrying her into the Franks uh, I've got a non-aggression pact with the Abdanians which is good welcome we will talk arrange marriage we will same again that's no good so that just leaves me with the Caledonians now I can get trade with the Caledonians so, so what else can I get for the Caledonians I, you, uh, ah, I can arrange marriage now your people are known to have honor. what I'm gonna do moderate but what I'm gonna do is sweeten it a bit off them a little bit of cash Mm, no, it's maybe a bit too much. Offer them 500. This I'm purely doing this. I don't want the trade agreement because I'm going to take it away anyway. What I want to do is just improve my relations with them, make them feel good towards me. Yeah, good, they've accepted. That means that they're now green. They like that. That increases the chance of doing what I really want to do, which is get one of their daughters she's poisonous personal influence self thing uh, this beautiful personal influence into well this is a good one so let's see uh, hopefully they're green they're gonna do it I set aside my sword to speak to you nope. I spoke with an honest that means I'm gonna have to s try and sweeten the deal again it's gonna cost me money but in the long term it's gonna be good offer them another 500 I know it's going to cost me money but it'd be good you speak well, but I feel <sighs> for you 700 then you're doing well quite well out of me I hope you're gonna you guys are gonna appreciate it Good. I've got now got. Yeah, can't do anything else like that. And the heir has now got a pretty good wife. In the long term, it's safe. I spent some money, but that's not there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is come down here. Warriors all. Ready for orders. Take all these guys' troops. Send him up into there just to try and keep the public order down. Bring this guy here. Right, I've got 17. Let's see if I can get any mercenaries. I want to be certain of a win because the problem is I don't know what's down here. 
I know all the Celtic factions start with two armies. So down here is another excuse me, another army. I don't know if it's in support range of the city. So I want to go in all guns blazing, basically. So there's a nonaga. Take these guys, Celtic mercenary berserk. So yeah, right. Now this is where I stab the Caledonians in the back. Declare war. Hopefully the princess will stay after I've done this, and I won't wipe the faction out because there is another army. There it is, tucked away in the back, but it's not supporting. I don't really have the thing, so what I'm going to do is increase my odds a little bit by going for a night attack, just for the fun of it as well. So here we go. And what I want to do is win this battle with the minimum amount of casualties. And except that I'm going to take casualties because there's they've got two sets of archers there, probably some cavalry. So here we go. Wait for the restart screen. Come on, come on, come on. Dry, right, start deployment. Nice night battle screen. I apologise guys that the graphics, the fire graphics won't be particularly brilliant because I have a slightly ageing graphics card, which means that uh, I can't have it on high graphics. Now, Celtic things have guerrilla deployment so what I'm going to do is bring there which allows me to move forward now I don't want to move too far forward because the AI when you have missile superiority or an onager the AI will basically come tearing out I want to get these guys close enough so I can hit this area there, but I'm going to put them on skirmish in case they rush out. I'm going to put the cavalry over here just to support there along with these guys. But what I will do with the cavalry is turn off their fire at will. I certainly don't want them peppering my archers now. My three. Thing I'm going to bring over here. What I'm going to do is move him a little bit forward, and these guys in support. The idea being is that when it comes out here, these guys can pepper them. I'm going to have the spears just maybe just in front with the. Onager to give screen the onager. Now, my two mercenary troops are going to be the ones who are going to take the the brunt of this battle. They're the ones who are going to not going to rush them forward, but I'm not going to keep them any longer. So I'm going to put them. I think I'll put them just over here. They can come in. Rush forward a pair like that. Alright. Put the onager on flaming shots. What I'm going to do is put the archers on heavy shots. Because I want a maximum amount of impact on whoever comes out there. If cavalry comes out, <coughs> hopefully they will go towards the there. If not, these guys have to back away. So, here goes nothing. I need to get that tower down straight away because I don't want to hear they come. Right, one of you guys forward, you therefore, you forward there. Archers. I want you to really start peppering these guys. 
I want you guys to move forward a little bit. You guys to move forward a little bit. I want you guys to really pepper these kids. There. I'll put you on. That's it. You pepper these guys. Don't run away too far, archers. Take the skirmish, enter the skirmish off. I've skirmished away too far. I don't want you going there. I need you to really start to pepper into these guys. I want you guys to charge these. Where's my... Our men have given up and are running for their lives. Running for their lives? Already? Right, I want you guys in here. Archers, I want you to keep hitting the cavalry. Spears forward. Not spears, sorry. Celtic band. I don't want the cavalry to get in too embarked at the moment. What I'll do is take that off and the cavalry can hit it. Come on, guys. <coughs> Can't you hit that bloody tower? Good. Ignore these guys. Jeez. Don't rush in, don't rush in guys, don't rush in guys. Just keep hitting this. Don't rush too far forward. Come up here. Take out the cavalry. You as well. Hit that cavalry. You, you, can't, you guys couldn't hit a barn door if you tried, could you? Our men are breaking up. Come forward, screen the archers. Cavalry. Take out that. Cavalry unit there. Archers. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on guys. You guys to punch through there. Take shield that cavalry off. The men are running. Coward, the enemy are losing their advantage. Oh. Towers down, right. Get in there. You keep pushing that cavalry away, mate. Keep hacking in there, guys. Ah, general's arriving. Monager, get a fast few shots on there. Enemy units have to return to the battle. Keep keep up, archers, don't get too close. Want them to come to us. Cavalry. Just stand there. Just keep these guys at bay. Archers keep pounding into that general. That's it, you keep hitting them hard. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Get over here, guys. That cavalry is going to be a pain in the neck. He's still quite strong. Shouldn't have let them go, these guys go out. Oh, looks like my berserkers have gone berserk, so keep pounding into them. Missiles ready! An entire 
Can't go up on that guy. Pull away. I want these archers to keep hitting this guy hard. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't want. Uh. Right, I've got that cavalry sorted out. You guys just keep peppering into this guy. Keep hitting them, that's it, keep hitting them, hitting them, hitting them, hit them hard. Run away guys, that's it, you're breaking, yep, good. In the battle. Hmm. As usual, lost more troops there, lost two units there. Lost quite a few, few units actually. Ah, oh, God. Close victory. That means. Is that all? Means these guys are going to be hanging around. So battle. what I need to do? I'm going to have to. Death in to there is no finer ending. Leave him for the moment. Are you ready to do your duty to the tribe? I'd love to finish these guys off, but I can't reach them. Cunning, cunning, yep. Hopefully these guys will go south now they're a horde. If not, I'm going to have to give them a friendly shove. Right, now, what am I going to build? I don't have that much money. I need to repair that and that. Good advantage of taking a Caledonian settlement is I don't have to think. Now, I don't have any trade, so I don't need that. Now, the three essences of building... As, as a, a colony is sanitation, which is cause it's got poor sanitation, food, I've got 59 food, and public order. Public order is bad, so what I'm going to do is get rid of the artisan. It would be nice to have them. This will give me food. I'm going to put something in there, probably a chieftain's hall or something there, and I'm going to put in these buildings won't require sanitation and that building I can put in a granary right now I need to do some research and end turn oh may assign a provincial governor I think that's going to be a job for you guys and I definitely need growth so Caledonians have gone south. Now, hopefully, they will just keep going south and not come back. That's what I really want at the moment. Maybe I'll sneak down just to give them a hint. Let's just see how far they've gone. See the Romans, that is empty, but I'm not going to push me luck by doing that. Diplomacy is a good way. They've gone down that far there. Hopefully they will keep going south. And that. And what I'm going to do is build pastures. And a granary. Got a, and see, I could build a well, but that gives me the sanitation there. So that's a good start. Things are going okay. I've got there. Uh, don't want to raise any more forces. These guys. That's what I'll do actually is get rid of this guy now, and see if I can replace. I've got, lost a spear unit, so that's nice and cheap. 137 kept me cavalry. These guys are recovering, so that gives me. That will save me a bit more cash. What comes to the Abdanians? 
Oh, that could be interesting. If they're going to go down and take a Roman settlement. I was hoping not to go to war with you guys, but if you're going to ruin my plans, I can see us having a slight dispute here. Hopefully the Abdanians might actually... I wonder if I can get the Abdanians to join my war against the Caledonians. Good omen. Public order plus two. All donations gratefully received. Abdanians. We have need of talk, I'm sure. But we also need good food, a warm fire, and warm women. Do they like me? Improving, yeah. Nah, it's low. Not gonna upset them by actually this. Try. Welcome. Speak. No. Nope. <laughs> Never know. Deteriorating. Come on, I married one of your daughters. Diplomatic marriage with the Caledonians. Oh, yeah, I've married one of your daughters, mate. You should be happy. Oh well. Right. This is growing. What I'm going to do now is pop the chieftain's house in there. That will give me a thing. See where the Caledonians got. Oh, the Caledonians have gone well south. That's good. So what I'm going to do now? Just to do a bit of thing. Let's pop over here, and I'm going to do a bit of raiding. And up here, I've got any cheap units? Gaze hounds, 125. That's so get a couple of gaze hounds and a spear unit just to. Give me the kernel of a new army like that. Actually, I'm going to. There's no Romans here. I know it's a risk, but. Just in case the Eddardians are getting a. Uh, too big for their boots or fancy their chances. I'll tell I'm gonna show them who's in charge of the land here. I should have fought that battle. Oh well. Just gonna occupy. I can't really repair much at the moment. That might repair by itself, so it's, I can't, probably couldn't afford to replace it anyway, so, right. Hopefully the Romans won't come bowling up now to try and take it back. Integrity when in owner. Right. So, I've expanded a little bit quicker than I'd originally planned. But the Abadanians have forced my hand. Up. Um, now I'm going to have to stop and consolidate here, guys. Purely and simply because if I push too forward too far too fast, I'm going to get into trouble. And I mean, it's, things are going there because I've got some civil disorder there. Let's just have a check on my governor. Who's the governor? Oh, yeah, my fax thing. What have you got here? Moral for ranged infantry. No, that's not much good. Let's see if my faction leaders got gained anything. We've got public order plus five construction costs. That my other my new general. What have you got for ranged infantry and commanded units? Uh, not these got actually got any ranged units. So. Oh, I'll just have to leave it the way it is. So now, how much? What have we got? Thing he's got there. I think you can become a champion, and so can you. Get these guys underway. Champion will give me a little bit of wealth and that from things, and we'll go for an end turn. To be honest, I've complete ah. So the Darnians have gone south. Now I'm wondering if they're going to go for Lindum. 
hopefully they run into a, a Roman army and take some of the brunt out of the Roman resistance and return. That'd be nice. Yep, ah, uh, gave a little bit of a punch. See if don't want to push too far south. Uh, ah, it's winter. Winter, 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 winter. These guys are taking attrition. Oh, they're pretty beat up, so I'm not going to take attrition, winter attrition, just to. Right, can't really build anything here. Get a town centre in, get some public order going. This is coming together. One more turn. You guys stay there. Uh, push you back. But hopefully the Abdanians will support me if, they, if another army comes up and attacks. Uh, I don't want to indulge in winter attrition. So, Geats have declared war on the Romans. Demolition of rally fields. Food shortage in Britannia was well, understandable because there's nothing here. And if I stop that and build that instead, that's more important. I want a marketplace here to get some spies, but getting some food on the go is probably going to be a bit better. So a quick check to see where the ah oh, the Caledonians are right down here now. Hopefully they keep going. They're just at war with me. Still deteriorating. The Darlings are improving. Franks are improving. And of course, the Romans hate me. Because I've just declared war on them. Okay, one more end turn. I've lost complete track of time. So. Oh, the Darlings are going sailing. I think I'll probably do this turn and then call it a day for this episode. If it's, I must remember to switch my timer on. <laughs> well, Romans have gone south. That's good. Centuries of op oppression and uncertainty have smothered the spirit of the Celtic people, Celtic people, but. Their glorious past preserved in legend provides the last glimmer of hope to a generation seeking a new beginning. At the ancient heart of, an of the island, the young Rye departs, determined to discover the future in store for his people. He will find knowledge of it and forge it himself. I think he will head for the lake. That's there. I need to build that. This is going to cost me an arm and a leg. Yep, I know, knew that. That would give me. I want to go this route and get market stores because I need to get a spy. I think up here things are coming together. This should change. Give me three public order. The chieftain's house. I could go up to that if I got the food. There's no sanitation issues. That would give me some more public order to keep this area stable. Uh, and keep it growing. What's the. Celtic, Celtic paganism is falling. Uh, how's the growth going? Growth per population five. I think what I'll do is I'll keep the growth going. If if the cat once the population influence drops too low, because at the moment it's probably getting Latin influence from here because it's 6.9 which is increasing Celtic paganism is falling here so I'm going to have to get something in here which will interfere with that, interfere with that. actually a Barnum, oh, I've got no intelligence on that anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it guys I hope you enjoyed the episode if you did have you might give it a like and if you think I'm actually producing something worth watching so don't try to subscribe <laughs>